A humanitarian challenge is emerging in Nigeria as the country experiences its worst floods in a decade. 33 out of Nigeria's 36 states are affected by the rising waters. Entire communities have been submerged, losing their houses, their fields and their livelihoods. So far, more than 600 people have died and at least 1.4 million people have been forced from their submerged homes. The country experiences seasonal flooding along these two main rivers every year, but on a far smaller scale. It's a different story this time. Take a look at this section of the Niger River as pictured in June this year and compare with what it looked like earlier this month when the river burst its banks. Some communities have witnessed water levels of up to 13 meters. We'll discuss why the situation is so devastating after this report by DW's Flourish Chukura. This is what the rainy season usually looks like in Anambra State in southeastern Nigeria. And this is what the same community looks like now. Swollen rivers have inundated numerous towns and villages across Nigeria, causing 1.4 million people to flee their homes for camps set up on higher ground. We are suffering, but suffering is better than stealing. That's why we are here in this condition. The clothes that I'm wearing are the only ones I have left. The flood carried away all our belongings. I have an acre of farmland. And I bought a bag of manure for $40. I planted rice. Two days later, the floods washed everything away. All our schools have been destroyed by water, so our plea is anyone that can help us should help us. Anyone that can help us should help us, please. But help is slow in arriving. Many roads and bridges are washed out. Traffic chokes those routes that are still passable, delaying the delivery of fuel and food supplies around the country. We have just returned yesterday from delivering goods in the capital Abuja and we are back here and we haven't even gone an inch. Local NGOs are scrambling to help where they can. The situation is heart-wrenching. We have families where a single mother with 10 or 11 children has lost everything. The biggest challenge currently is the shortage of food. Such a family needs more than one bag of rice per meal, and they eat three meals a day. Many people in hard-hit states like Anambra are still waiting for assistance promised by the government to arrive. So if the government has been doing anything, they haven't done anything yet. They have not seen any presence of the government. With key infrastructure swallowed by water, Many of the flooded communities are without power and people's generators have been destroyed. Critical infrastructures such as schools, healthcare centers, police stations and banks can't operate. And with the number of farmlands that have been destroyed, there are concerns about food scarcity in the coming months. Nigeria's government blames most of the flooding on unseasonally heavy rain but other factors play a role. The Ladgo Dam in neighboring Cameroon opens its gates every year, releasing excess water that flows into Nigeria. But Nigeria has failed to build a dam to manage the overflow. The Nigerian government says that though they received early warning signs of the flood, they never foresaw this level of destruction. And southeastern Nigeria is at risk of flooding until the end of the rainy season in November. I'm joined now by Adaku Echendu in Ottawa. She is an environmental researcher at Queen's University in Canada. Welcome to DW News Africa, Adaku. Now, you've been researching the reasons for Nigeria's flooding. Um, we know the main rivers in the country flood annually. Why is the situation different this time? 
Yeah, the situation is different this time because of the scale and magnitude. So while Nigeria is prone to annual flooding, this year we've had very bad flooding. And the time we were experiencing this kind of flooding last was in 2012, and we have similar factors. So in 2012, there was release of dams, various dams from Cameroon. So that's the same this year. So even though this morning uh, the official reports we have from the National Minister of Water Resources tells us that the flooding we are experiencing is not due to any it's not related to any dam release, but due to rainfall. So we we'll have higher rainfall this year. So so higher rainfall um, means the dams get full and then they get released. I mean, we've had a lot of rainfall before. Is, is, the, is it exceptional this year? So apparently they've we've had very, very higher than normal rainfalls. And this is one of the impacts of climate change as experienced over the globe. But it's very, very important to differentiate the dynamics of Nigeria's flooding from the global climate phenomena. So climate change is part of it, but it's just a very tiny piece of the of the puzzle in the flooding problem in Nigeria. So the main reason for this flooding we're currently experiencing is the lack of infrastructure and uh, poor planning. What kind of infrastructure are we talking about that needs to be in place uh, and what kind of planning are, are you uh, should be in place to, to prevent this kind of flooding? Yeah, first of all, proper planning would mean that there is no development on floodplain plains, first of all. So it's easy to blame the people for building up floodplains. But when you have regulations, if you, if you don't enforce them, the people do what they they do so you can't say people are developing on floodplains then secondly there's also infrastructure engineering infrastructure that should be in place to help mitigate flooding as is the practice all over the globe but sadly we don't have that in nigeria so that is why the flooding is very very serious and, and, very and what, severe. what kinds of uh, you say engineering infrastructure what exactly are we talking about can you give us examples yeah, so there are, very, yeah, there are various forms of engineering infrastructure that could help mitigate flooding. So you could have reservoirs, you could have dams. And actually, in this flooding we're experiencing, there are reports that there is a dam Nigeria is supposed to build since um, many for many decades now that we don't still have in place. So there are so many engineering experts, that, engineering designs that we can put in place to help control flooding. For example, in the Netherlands, so the Netherlands is very prone to flooding, so they have a lot of uh, structures in place to control flooding. But sadly, sadly, we don't even have anything. So I'm not saying we should have um, the type of infrastructure Netherlands have because the dynamics are also different, but we have nothing to actually help us affect the question of uh, the effects of uh, flooding. So that is why you see every year in Nigeria, most of the urban centers are flooded. And is this uh, resulting from the lack of a strategy? Um, I wouldn't say is um, due to the lack of strategy, even though we do not have a flood risk management uh, policy in place. I say this because uh, after the 2012 floods we had, the government um, had um, a post-disaster risk management agenda, and flooding is number one on this list, so it's a priority. We also have the national water policy which understands the need for controlling flooding. It acknowledges that flooding is a threat. So while, while there are some policies we do not have, there are also many others we have that acknowledges the risk of flooding, the, the importance of preventing flooding, but sadly these are not uh, implemented. There is no political will to implement what we have. I spoke there with Adaku Echendu. She's an environmental researcher at Queen's University in Canada.